Hey, this is Bob. In the water. With Robert Johnson. That's the official title. Um, it's a thing. Uh, it is the words within the words. And the sound of the words within the word that create new words. And word and language combination that reveal a code to unlock the mystery of the universe. And it comes from 1 Corinthians 14.2. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue, speaketh not unto men, but unto God. That's in the book. Okay. Now, this is this is really good. This is this is the key. It's really simple. This is kind of like proof that shit works. Okay. Here is a key. Because a key in Spanish is here. So what you hear is the key. So, if you listen to the sound of that, here is a key. Can you hear a key? A key. That's pretty simple. See, there's, there's validity to this in that uh, if you actually do this and find out for yourself, so I always encourage people to find out for themselves, you know, it's like uh, there's actually a way to communicate with the universe. The lands on elite that says belief, a plane flies out to sea, it's plain to see. See, I see what it says to me. And even Einstein said we can hear, the, hear the, 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 the sound of the universe or the universe speaking to us. This is the actual way to do it. Um, yeah. I'm going to give you another one here. See, you actually hear things with your eyes. It's important. Um, okay. It's symbols. Here's another one. Symbols. See, these symbols speak to you. But that's also the, uh, on a drum set. See, there's, there's one right there. These symbols. Same sound. Different words. Symbols create a sound just like that creates a sound. It's like this. You see a little, you see a little restroom like this. You see a little sign that goes like this. Got this little thing there. Got this little dress there. And you got this guy here. Yeah. These are symbols. Symbols that create sound in your mind. It's like, it's like women, men, men, women. Do you see this and it says, whoa, man, don't go in there. And you actually think this is a place I can go down and, and actually, uh, you know, use the restroom. I can sit down and do my business. I can clean up. I mean, you look at this and it says so much. It's creating thought in your mind, those silent sounds. See, even when you, uh, even when you think to yourself, you're talking to yourself in a silent language. Count yourself uh, uh, one, two, three in your head. Uno, dos, tres. See, same concept, different, different values. See, even symbols, symbols. See, it's like that little monkey with its symbols. I like that. I on key. Yeah. These are little, little presentments from God that kind of give you a clue. See, God's not going to tell you everything, otherwise it would be too easy and what would be the point. Okay, now, I want to talk about one more thing here in this, in this little language. I'll leave that up there. Um, okay. So this is kind of crossing over. Okay, in order to bridge or span a gap in construction as well as in language and argument, a process of supporting something is required, which is known as an abutment. After the bridge, it exists at the end, allowing a point where attachment can exist for support. See, I use two languages. It's like, uh, you know, I use two things to create another. I got blue here. I got red here. And when I notice look at this red and blue, I get what? Something different is created. Purple. See that? Purple. Red and blue makes purple. I do the same thing in language. See, that's the bridge. See over here you got uh I see this one. We got America. And we got 
Mexico. See that? Got to build a fence in between. I'm pretty much fencing, being that, uh, being that uh, the sword is the spoken word. I added five letters to that to change the sword to the spoken word, P-O-K-E-N. Pretty much fencing, but I can actually get over the fence. I can build a bridge. I'm going to show you a couple words here. I'm going to stick with the purple. P-U-R-P-L-E. People, you are. People living eternally. Just laugh at you, learn every day, live every day, love every day, and live eternally. That's the lace. Anyway, now you got some chips, like pet chips. Yep, see, spirit said about a word. Now you got some chips to eat. Okay, so we got a word. I love this stuff because I find out uh, the suffixes. This suffix it. Yep, got to give you a prefix that didn't work, so you give me something else to fix it. Suffix, suffix. Okay, you got unity. Something happened to Tyson Street. T-Y, son, down is leading with a T-Y. The I-T-Y suffix in Spanish, I-T-Ys are I-D-A-D. So well, God is quite apparent to me in this world, and apparent in language, a parent, as in our father. See that? T-Y. Thank you. T-Ys are dad. That's truth. is why God is the truth. It's really pretty simple. These are concepts, see? And when you actually kind of see what's here and what's here. See, this says it's you and I, T-Y. See, that's you and I, T-Y. And when you bridge that gap, it gives you the answer right there. See, it's, it's, it's you and I, Dad. It's like a sentence is built. It's you and I, Dad. See that? Unidat. See, this is a suffix. This runs throughout language, these little clues, this little code everybody's looking for. And there's another word. Okay, if it's my dad, it could be anything, there's many other, you know, love has no gender. Okay, so, i got another one. See, when I'm in unison with God, in alignment, in unison, ah, what's that say? It's you and I, son. And in Spanish, this is what's interesting, because here's where the sound comes into play. Yeah. It's unisono. See, in unison with God. And what's built out of this is, 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 is it's, it's you and I, son, in unison. And what bridges the gap, bridges the gap and creates a new concept here is the sound of this. I can take the sound of so no and turn it into the English language. See, it's you and I. So no. You just got to know that. See, it's you and I, so no. Bridge is the gap. Yeah, I'm pretty good at fencing. It's about my sordid past. <laughs> I like this one. My sordid past. See, because <laughs> my sword ID. Yeah. Sorted. Yep. People tore me up with their words, stabbed me with their words. You know, even like hooked me with their words, sliced me with their words. But I finally found out what the power is in the word. You know, it's about, uh, it's about, uh, the, the word has only the power you give it. Just take the power out of it, you know. And so, anyway, but, uh, yeah, I'll just leave you with a little joke. I'll leave you a little joke. Just a little bonus in case you got this far. Didn't mail out. People like to refer to me as a wordsmith. Wordsmith. But I kind of, I kind of be referred to, I like to be referred to as, here come, as a, ta-da, a cunning linguist. Say that fast. Yeah. But see, here's the thing about that. First Corinthians 14, 2. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not a man, but unto God. Huh, cunning linguist. Somehow, I think some kind of tongue is involved with that. Anyway, there you go. Remember, Romans 119, for what may be known of God is manifest in them, for surely I've shooed it unto them. See my shoes? They got tongues. Anyway, that's enough of that. Have a nice day and thanks for listening.